on behalf of Major William Bill Cedarburg's White's family, we welcome you to a celebration of life. Please stand for the invocation given by Navy Captain Chuck Bruce. We may stand for the national anthem sung by Melissa Vasquez. If you are in uniform, please put on your covers and render an appropriate answer. Major Bill White offered himself for the good of the country he loved by joining the Marine Corps, faithfully serving the greatest generation and for generations to come. The Major may be gone from our lives, but what he did with his life in serving you, Lord, and his country and his Corps will long be remembered. Thank you, Lord, for this gift of a man who could teach many of us the words of the Apostle Paul, which means, which means consider others as more important than yourselves. So, Lord, we ask for your presence in this celebration of life. Give us ears to hear the life of Major White, learning what sacrifice means, and perhaps to catch a whisper from you, Jesus, as how we ought to live. In your precious name, amen. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting Gentlemen, let me introduce to you Dr. Rafael Paso.
Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. For, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepares ta a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup with Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, what follows are tributes to our beloved World War II and battle if he was human survivor. Major William Bill Cedarburg White. Let me introduce to you the Stockton Marine Corps Club Commander, retired gunnery sergeant, Marvin Hernandez Garcia. Good afternoon, everyone. I got about 20 pieces of paper that I want to read today. It's supposed to be a joke. Uh, today, it's a celebration of life. Major White will be here today telling you, don't cry. He will tell you, dance. He will tell you, suck it up, let's go, let's do something else. He will be sitting here today honoring whoever was there laying next to that picture there. He will be paying his respects. This weekend is Memorial Day. Memorial Day weekend, and throughout the nation, and even overseas, you see Americans decorating, cleaning, uh, placing flags in cemeteries, honoring the veterans. Major Bill, Bill White would have been there. No matter what we had in mind, he was always ready, and I know some of my fellow Marines will say, he will always say this. Hey, sir, are you ready? Yes. How many hours a day? 25 hours. And one day I actually asked him, hey, sir, you know, what do you mean 25 hours? We only have 24. And he will say, there's always one more. One more hour. Um, Major White was introduced to me at a Marine Corps birthday on November 10th, 2015, uh, by Master Gunner Simon Bale over in Rio Vista. And from that day on, I was, I was in awe. He was 100 years old, 101. And I was like, wow, we got a World War II veteran? I, I, I couldn't believe it, because the last time I had seen one was in Mississippi, in Picayu, Mississippi, about three or four years before. So I met Major, uh, Major White. I presented one of the coins that I had. And then, a couple of months later, I met another World War II veteran, Frank Wright, sitting right here. And from then on, both individuals were always going with us, anywhere. And it was funny because I always say this, Major White was almost 10 years older than Frank. So the Major will, will call Frank, kid. And I usually, if I go pick him up, whenever we, we take turns picking him up, uh, I would go pick up Frank in Lodi first, because he lives in Lodi, and then I would go uh, to the Oaks to pick up the Major. And one day, I picked up the Major first, because we're going to uh, Cherokee Memorial to pay our respects. So as soon as the Major gets in, the, in my truck, he looks back, and he's he asked, where is the kid? So I thought he was talking about little Marvin, my son. And I'm like, oh, sir, you know, he's already going to college in LA. Oh, no, I'm not talking about him. What, what, what do you mean? The kid is in LA? And then, you know, light bulb. Oh, you're talking about Frank. He's like, yes, Frank, where's Frank at? Oh, sir, we're going to go pick him up next. But that's, 
the love that both Major Frank, uh, sorry, Major Bill White and Frank had, they were always together. Um, I think that the last memory that we have of them together was when Frank and I paid a visit to the Major at the hospital. And I, I, you know, I left them alone, but they were talking like, like kids. And that was the last time we, we saw him. So I'm not going to get emotional because the Major will tell me, hey, don't cry. There's no crying in the Marine Corps. So um, I can talk and talk forever, but it's going to be my honor to introduce to you, first and foremost, our first speaker tonight, or today, and it's going to be Corporal Frank Wright. Corporal Frank Wright fought at the famous Battle of Iwo Jima, which was basically the first step towards the invasion of the big islands of Japan. And both Major Bill White and Frank got wounded in action. Both, both of them are Purple Heart recipients. They, they shared that common bond. The only thing is that Frank was on one side by the airfield, and Major White was by Mount Suribashi. They had that bond together. And that's why I would like to introduce to you our 96-year-old kid, Corporal Frank Wright. Thank you, Gunny. Well, I am the kid, I guess, on it. I met the major with the Stockton Marine Corps Club, and we were in a lot of uh, celebrations together after that. Marvin was our escort most of the time, and most of the club followed through. The best time I had actually with the major was at on the grandstand waiting for the parade to come by and just sat there and watched all the people. Then we got talking about Iwo Jima and uh, I got a chance to see and what he was doing at that particular time and what his uh, followers were going and his squad was going to do. He asked me where I was at the particular time, especially when the flag was ra being ro raised on February the 23rd, 1945. He said that he didn't see the flag go up because he was at the bottom of Mount Sarabachi. And I was on the other end of the island on airfield number two, and we were fighting hand to hand there. And all of a sudden, things stopped. We saw the flag up there from a distance. And we didn't know exactly what was going on, but all the ships in the harbor came and started hollering. Same uh, blowing their horns, and I got a chance to see it myself on it. It was quite a sight. Right. Major and I were on different ends of the island from February to March, and both of us were shot at the same time on March the 3rd, 1945. Right. He was able to get to the beach. I was able to get to the beach. We didn't see anybody. We didn't see him, each other at all until about six years ago when we met and started comparing notes on it. And that was the first time that I had ever seen or talked to anyone in regards to the landing on, uh, on Iwo Jima 
And from then on, we were buddy-buddies. You don't usually get buddy-buddies with a major and a corporal, but he was there, so. And I'm very pleased that I was allowed to say something here about the major and my friend. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor to introduce the City of Stockton Mayor, Marine Corps Veteran Sergeant, the Honorable Kevin Lincoln. Well, as we're here today celebrating the life of Major Wright, Major White, sorry, um, I just want to say to uh, the family. Um, his, his two daughters, um, Mary and, and Alice, thank you for sharing your father with us. I didn't know him very long, um, but the interactions that I had with him, there is some very distinct characteristics that he embodied and he'd made sure everyone around him knew and felt. He was committed. He was committed to his community. He was committed to his family. And he was committed to his country. And if you know anything about the Marine Corps, you, you have to understand that the Marine Corps has a very deep and distinct pride, sense of pride and tradition. And Marines that go through boot camp, that pin on that Eagle Globe and Anchor, there's certain things that inspire these Marines, that motivate these Marines to live a selfless and sacrificial life like Major White did. And that is when we, when we're training and we embrace our rich history, when we march and we run to certain cadence, we're calling on the names of those Marines who have gone before us and fought those battles before us. And that's what gives us the courage and the strength to be able to stand and face anything that may come before us. But what's special about the Major is that he lived and fought through some of the most historic battles in Marine Corps history in the 20th century. He was the very Marine that we were drawing our strength and our courage from. But he just wasn't a, any type of Marine. He reached the pinnacle in the highest heights See, because not every officer is an enlisted person become the, before, the, before they become off an officer. And he, those officers who were prior enlisted are some of the most respected officers in the United States Marine Corps because they understand exactly what their troops on the ground, the troops that they're leading, go through and experience. Thank you for allowing us to embrace the legacy of your father, Mary and Alice. Although the major may not be with us and he's gone, there's one thing that you could rest assured, that his legacy will live on forever. Amen. Semper Fi. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you County of San Joaquin Supervisor, Mr. Tom Patty. Uh, 
Well, it gives me a distinct honor, myself and Supervisor Via Pudwa, to stand here as a representative for our entire county, which is about 800,000 people. And that's a distinction for us to stand here in that, in that respect. You also look at the state of California, 40 million. United States, over 300 million. Look at the global population of billions. And then you start to look at the impact that people like Bill White, our major, had in the freedom and the prosperity of not only this great nation, but the world, when duty called. You look back in time, you see oftentimes now, people will talk about family life is not the Leave it to Beaver era. If you remember that Leave it to Beaver era, and some people will say disparaging things like, oh, well, come on, look at June Cleaver and how, how nice it was, and she was in a nice dress, and the kids were somewhat you know, well-behaved, and, and you know, when Dad came home, and they kind of like to make fun of it. But let's look at that era, because that's our major's era, and that's where his family would have come from. And you look at that disparity, you look at, think about World War I and World War II, and that June Cleaver character, she clearly would have lost a brother, an uncle, a father, a, a, a friend of some sort in World War I or World War II and being, been part of that legacy of, of America, coming out of a depression, coming out of some of the worst and most difficult times that the world has ever seen because there was a World War I followed by a World War II. So those challenges and that, that disparity was an era that bred an era of, as they call it now, the greatest generation. You think about what's definitive about a person, about, about that generation, about some of those hardships. And you start to recognize that there's that quality and that ingredient called character. That resilience, that no matter how difficult the circumstance, the situation, the adversity, the hardship, there are those in America's history, proudly in the military and throughout our great nation, some of the men and women that grew up here through hardships, they had character. And Major Bill White reflected that character of those that he served with and those that, that were not able to make it home. They rose to the occasion and served their country at the time of need. And when they, came, when they were done with that, they came back and they served their community and they served their family. And now we recognize there's PTSD. Can you imagine what they were going through back then? some of the hardships, and they were called to service, and you weren't going home unless it was in a body bag, a wheelchair, or some other reason. You weren't just going to go do a little bit of time. You were there till the end of that war. And oftentimes when you were done, you see a parade celebrated in New York City and ticker tapes, and, and the was a celebration. Most people were given a one-way bus ticket, a little a couple of dollars in their pocket, and they were sent home to a community that I'm sure welcome them in many capacities, but also a community that was going to be facing challenges and adversity. And it was that great generation that showed that strength, that depth, that character, that set the standard that our great nation is founded upon because we proved ourselves in time. Those that do, as our mayor said, those that do put on that uniform, they have an example, they have a legacy that was set forth, and they wear that uniform with pride, and they show their character, they show their integrity. And I am proud to be here as a representative with myself and, and all here, and, and to reflect during this celebration of life and a reflection of how lucky and beneficial we were for that great generation, that example that they set for us, and the virtue that they left, that impression, that quality called character that we learn and we grow from. So I do thank you all. We, we respect and appreciate the family, and thank you for sharing. And you have to really appreciate our, our major, Bill White, because even in the last days of his life, he brought joy. He brought a unique quality, so unique that, as you'll see in the videotape, some 400,000 people reached out to him to be his valentine. You have to appreciate that fun, that even though he may have been sitting in a rest home and even though he was, his time was not as active as it used to be, he still had that spark of life. He still had something kindling that he, want, he wasn't quite done touching humanity as his generation could be considered saving humanity, saving the virtue of freedom and qualities 
that this great nation has set the example to be. So I thank you all. It's just an honor to be here with such great esteemed company and this celebration. I thank you all. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you County of San Joaquin Supervisor Miguel Villapura. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, first of all, I'm honored to be here. It's uh, quite an honor to uh, speak on behalf of uh, Major Bill White and my condolences to the family because uh, I mean, to, to think that you had this special man in your life for 107 years is unbelievable. He was a uh, he was the face of the Marines. Um, he was just a true leader in every, every aspect. If you think about what he's been through and you know the challenges he's faced and, and how he's stepped up and and uh, think about all the, you know when I came into office 2016, I remember meeting him and, and I, I left and I thought about what a truly inspirational man he was. I mean the stories he had and he could he could ask him anything about the past and he could recite a lot of things and you know. Just, Thinking about myself, you asked me what I did yesterday, I have a hard time thinking about it, but, uh, you know, Major Bill White was just a fascinating character, and, and um, just, you think about our freedoms we share and all the veterans and, and how special it is to think that, uh, you know, we have Memorial Day on Monday and, you know, the Major passed away this time and we got to, we got to, we get to highlight his life right now. And, um, I thank you for having me, and I think it's truly an honor, and I'm glad we're honoring Mr. Bill, Major Bill White. And thank you for having me. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you the commanding officer of the American Legion, Carl Ross Post, an Army veteran, Mr. Kevin Temin. And first, let me start by saying it is truly an honor to be speaking here today. The Major is nothing short of a legend. If you're sitting in this room today, there's a good chance that you already know about all the many things that made the Major a great man and a great Marine. So I'll not tell you something that you may already know about him. Instead, I'd like to tell you a personal story about the Major that I experienced. The Major was at an American Legion a little while ago and he had to use the restroom. I told who he was with that I was headed that direction and I'll escort him. As I followed him, he kept turning around looking at me. When we got to the restroom, he stopped, turned around, and sternly told me, stop there, I'm fine. <laughs> Being the major, the legend that he is, I snapped right to attention and did the only thing I could do. Yes, sir. <laughs> That's about all I could muster up. As I waited for him outside and he came out, he just stared at me. He slowly started away while still staring at me. And then, without any warning, he just turned around and he took off. Don't let the walker fool you. The man can move. <laughs> I was having a hard time keeping up. Then, he strongly, when he got to the seat, he kind of turned, gave me a look with a little smirk. I'm fine. Smirked again, like he knew he was messing with me. And that was the major. All the way till the end. Sharp, a jokester, and larger than life. He may have been a man of smaller stature, but carried himself like a giant. And you couldn't help but respect everything he was and everything he stood for. And that's what I'm going to take away from the major. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you one of our veteran rights advocates for our county and the state, 
Marine veteran, Lance Corporal Tino Adami. Thank you. On behalf of my wife, myself, our condolences, the family. We all took the oath to serve and protect our country against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And we continue to serve and protect. No one has released us from this oath. Major Bill White, you are now released from your oath. Thank you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please let me introduce to you, Stockton Marine Corps and Marine Veteran Sergeant James Crotchet. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for uh, allowing me to be here and to the family. My deepest or condolences and prayers. But, um, I had mentioned to the Stockton Marine Corps Club and to the family when we had had a had like a little get together. Um, meeting Major and Frank as well was something completely different for me because I wasn't very I, I was close to to both my grandfathers, but as time went on and I got older, uh, we became a little distant. Um, but uh, my grandfather that served in the Philippines in World War II, he was uh, located in Florida at the time when I joined the Marine Corps. And during both of my deployments to Afghanistan, two years apart from each other, I lost both my grandfathers. Um, in November of 2019 and 2000, uh, or excuse me, uh, 2009 and 2011. And I didn't get it's because my grandfather never really talked about it, about the Philippines. So there's that that distance, that that discomfort that I didn't have um, with them. Each other. When I first met Major, he was something else <laughs> because it, it's something to be able to meet somebody generation but with that character was completely amazing and heaven sent just because of the fact that he he himself never looked down or talked down to you and being that we were both Marines he shook my hand gave me a hug and called me brother and then he was able to share some of the experiences that he had that I never learned from even my own grandfathers. So for me, it was a, having that having that closure, being able to know something from that generation and, uh, and from that time frame. So for me, it was deeply heartfelt, and to be able to call him not only a brother but also a friend, and be able to sit there and joke around and talk with them was the greatest time in my life when I had the time. Not only was I excited and honored for myself, but I also was for my wife and my son, because now my son, 10 years now, he can continue to grow up and be able to tell his friends and his family that he the greatest man within the greatest generation and not only was he just like his dad, but he fought for this country during a time that would have changed how the world is now if it would have went differently. But to be able to know that my son met a man like that from World War II and, is, and having that much character, I'm very deeply grateful that I got a chance to shake hands and be a friend of his, but also he was a friend to my son as well. Thank you.
Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you one of the Stockton Marine Corps Club's Board of Director members and Marine veteran, Sergeant Mireya Alvarado. Thank you, Juan. Some people spend an entire lifetime wondering if they made a difference in this world. But the Marines don't have that problem. Words from the Honorable President Ronald Reagan. I don't think there is a Marine more deserving of that quote than Major White. What can be said in a handful of minutes about me? What words can I say that do justice to a man whose biography started in the Second World War and came to a close amidst the near end of a global pandemic? Major White was a hero. He was my friend and, above all, a United States Marine. Major White and I saw the world in much the very same way. We both longed for a sense of purpose and understanding. He found that through the camaraderie of the Stockton Marine Corps Club. I came to know Major White when I relocated back to Stockton after serving in the, in the military. Even at that time, at the blossoming young age of 102, he maintained his unwavering commitment to myself and other veterans. He welcomed me back and encouraged me to never forget what my service was to our country and the nation as a whole. As veterans, oftentimes, there is a transition that is very difficult from the military to the civilian sector. Major White was a combat veteran who struggled with post-war adjustment. But through his pride and perseverance, he pushed through. And this was his strength to motivate the rest of us. Through his life and experience, he helped me and other veterans find our place within our community by joining veteran organizations and feeling welcomed again. Through his years of dedication to us veterans, I was able to gain the strength to not see my experience in war as a difficult memory, but more use it as a guide to help other veterans who are transitioning as well. The camaraderie that you form in the Marines is unbreakable. The Major is what kept the Stockton Marine Corps Club united. He was our glue. His presence was and is a symbol of why Marines continue to do what we do today. He will be greatly missed. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me introduce to you Mr. Larry Good afternoon. I am honored to be here today as a representative of the Huntington Beach Police Explorer Post 563. I was 15 years old when I joined the Post in 1972. My mom worked with one of the Post Advisors, Ivor Gitsum, who recommended the program for my brother and myself. At the first meeting I attended, I met Officer White. Another advisor, I was also quite taken by a pretty young lady in the post who I learned was Mary. Mary White, now I thought it, it just can't be a coincidence. The Explorers, if you don't know, are affiliated with the Boy Scouts. The program, unlike scouting back then, was also open to girls. It was a means where a young man or woman could join a particular post to participate in activities related to a career such as police or fire. Officer White, who I learned was also a retired Marine Major, helped to build the Huntington Beach program into one that was more than camping and social activity. Under his guidance, we participated in a very interactive ride-along program 
worked in the jail, fingerprinting and feeding the prisoners, washed and cleaned the vehicles, which included training to search every nook and cranny for stashed evidence. We were utilized to search for evidence at crime scenes like spent shell casings where a large area or field had to be meticulously looked over. We went to the pistol range and were trained by the range master on how to properly handle a gun from safety first to aiming, firing, and different types of weapons that were used. We also worked at the range replacing targets, assisting the public, and general maintenance. We would travel to schools to present bike safety programs and register bikes. We worked at the health court, but only filing. We also participated in the Police Explorer Academy every year, held at the Aero Toro Marine Base. I realized some of the tasks may seem trivial, but we were young, still kids, and it gave us exposure to the police officers and the activities they performed. It was a great program, and a large percentage of the members, when I was involved, went on to careers in law enforcement with various departments or state and federal agencies. Officer White was very proud of each member who did pursue a career and collected patches from the various agencies which he framed and hung on the wall on the, of the White House, the post-meeting and functional facility that was named for Officer White. He got that building donated, installed. It was Officer White who was responsible for much of what we did. He endlessly was seeking opportunities for us to participate donations for support, and even produced or procured a bus which the explorers helped to refurbish, meaning we did a lot of scraping and sanding. But eventually it was presented to the city of the Center. Officer White was very adept at getting people and organizations to donate equipment, money, or both. Yet he never sought anything for these efforts. He was a very humble man and was very dedicated to helping these young people remaining active for 30 years, long after his daughter had left the post. Which is why I mentioned Mary. She was indeed his daughter. I got up the nerve and talked to her. We became friends, and eventually we began dating. We were high school sweethearts, which gave me, in particular, more exposure to Officer White. And once I learned that he was a World War II vet, a Marine major who fought at Iwo Jima and was now the jailer for the city of Huntington Beach, well, there was never the need for the talk. No, sir. But apparently he approved of me as I was often at the house, swam in the pool where he had the bottom completely painted as an American flag, and it was really awesome. And, he was, and I was invited to go with the family in their motorhome. And while I, Mary and I stopped dating after two years, I remained close to the family. Over the years, I would occasionally call and arrange a lunch or dinner. He was one of the few World War II vets who would talk about his experience in the war. What an opportunity to hear the stories firsthand and gain insight and historical perspective. <clears throat> Even at 103, I called Mary and we, we all took Bill, as I now called him, out for an Italian dinner. But my visits were often opportunities for me to speak with one of the men in my life who You had heard about his service and dedication, his honor and his work, and would share stories or experiences with me that he did not share with many others. Why? To help me get through a tough time, an emotional time, times when I needed solid advice, or to know you could get through adversity and still be a good man. After all these years, I was still an explorer in many ways, and he was still my advisor. Mr. White, for your dedication and over 30 years of service to the members of Explorer Post 563, most of them coming after your retirement from the city of Huntington Beach. You led with honor, distinction, and a firm yet gentle hand. Your legacy lives on in the vast numbers of explorers who served in the military and as law enforcement officers. many gaining insight and character lessons from the examples you set. And I personally thank you for helping me to become a wiser and better man. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my honor and pleasure to introduce to you Major White's daughters, Miss Alice White, Mary Schroeder, 
and the major's grander, Miss Leah. I want to thank you all for coming today. Major White was many things. He was a Marine, he was a police officer, a mentor, and a friend. But to us, he was dad. We've heard a lot about his service to the Marine Corps and Huntington Beach Police Department, as well as those whose lives he has touched in other ways. But let me tell you a little bit about him as a son, a husband, a father, a grandfather, and a great-grandfather. My dad and his brother spent a lot of their youth on a farm in the Central Valley. They rode horses and played with the chickens, typical things for kids their age. When he was in Long Beach, he used to love going to the pike and ride the Ferris wheel and watch movies. He told me once that the scariest movie he ever saw was The Phantom of the Opera. It was a silent version in those days. Every time just before he took off his mask, Dad would hide under his seat because he was just too scared to see his face. When he was a little older, he developed a love for trains. He would board a train in Long Beach and ride it all the way to the end of the line and then back again. After high school, he still loved riding the trains. And during the early years of the Depression, he was even hobo for a little while. My grandmother eventually remarried a man by the name of Leonard White. And Dad always respected and treated her new husband as a father. Dad was a little bit of a troublemaker, so he was sent to high school at the Principia in St. Louis. It was a Christian science academy, as my grandmother had now converted to Christian science with her new husband. Not knowing what he wanted to do after high school, he returned to Long Beach he needed to figure out what he wanted to do with his life, so he decided to join the Marine Corps. This was before the war, and they were pretty particular about what he accepted, and he was actually turned down due to his skin condition. Not sure what to do next, he traveled to the Boulder Dam, which is now the Hoover Dam. He spent about a year working on the dam, mostly driving a truck through the tunnels, removing dirt and rock. They weren't much money, and he had to pay for board. Dad had a motorcycle back then, and he told a story about rooming with a Native American man who stole it in the middle of the night, and he never rode a motorcycle again. He always said he was in the best shape of his life then, so when World War II broke out, he tried to enlist again, and this time he was accepted. He began using the name William White in honor of his stepfather and eventually his mother had to go through a court process to get his name changed legally, and thus he became William Cedarburg White. He would write home often, and his mother kept every letter and telegram that he sent her, and this inspired him to start collecting bits and pieces of his life, saving them in scrapbooks. He accumulated multiple bookshelves of everything, including not only photographs and mementos like menus and airline tickets, but also cancel checks and documents to record the important events in his life. He even kept the letters his mother saved. After the war, the Marine Corps wanted to show their appreciation by giving him a prime assignment stationed in Hawaii. He turned down that assignment because his stepfather had become ill and he wanted to be there for him and his mother. When his father passed, he made sure his mother was taken care of and helped her move a nice scene in Long Beach with an ocean view. And every Sunday, we would go to visit. And every holiday, she came and stayed at our house. Mm -hmm. He was a devoted husband to his wife, Jeanette, for over 40 years. When my mom wanted to be closer, he moved from Tustin to Huntington Beach. He bought a home about a quarter mile from the beach and down the street, around the corner, from her younger sister, to whom she was very close. He was now retired from the Marine Corps and decided to become a police officer with the city of Huntington Beach. Even though we were close to the beach, he put a pool in our home with a flag. Yeah. 
and that became the gathering place for cousins and most of the Grainberg kids. He always wanted mom to be happy and have many of the nice things that he could provide. When it was time to buy a car, they drove to the car lot, asked her which car she wanted, she pointed it out, and that was the car they bought. Since he was 11 years older than mom, when he got older, he was concerned that she would pa he would pass before her, and he wanted to make things easier for her. So he sold the family home, purchased a condo in an adult community so that she would not have to deal with worker maintenance. They loved to travel, and owning a nice FMC motorhome was always a dream of hers. He wanted to make that dream come true, so he found one and fixed it up just like new. They had many adventures in the motorhome, driving around the U.S. and Canada, and they even took a truck trip on a flatbed rail car through Mexico. They also made trips to China and Japan, and he was fortunate enough to be able to return to Iwo Jima twice, and once with mom. He wanted to learn about his ancestry, so he and my mother traveled to Scandinavia twice to do genealogy research on his family. He eventually was able to locate and categorize over 2,000 names of family members. He sifted through records in old churches and towns following one clue after another, and he did all this without the help of the internet. As a father, he wanted to provide us with an opportunity to see the country he was so proud of. We took family vacations to most of the western and midwestern states as far away as Mount Rushmore. He wanted us to be, experience as many of our national parks as we could. Usually the trips included fishing. He did love to fish and he taught us to bait and clean a hook and clean a fish at an early age. Dad was not one to yell or lecture us if we did something wrong. Usually a word or a strong look would be enough. On one of our vacations we wanted to And he told us not to. So my mom helped us hide him. The smell was pretty strong. <laughs> All he said was, told you not to bring him home. <laughs> because my mom was a stay-at-home mom, he was the one who worked and provided for us. He made sure we always lived within our means. After living through the Great Depression, it was important to him that we never incur debt and it was a value instilled in him by his mother. He passed that on to us as well. Anything he purchased that was not paid for in cash, he always made a point to pay off as soon as possible. We weren't rich, but we lived comfortably, and our home was filled with love. Through his employment with the police department, he became an advisor with the Explorer Post, which eventually became Huntington Beach Search and Rescue. It was a youth organization that is still active today. When I was old enough, I joined the post and had the privilege to participate in many activities with my dad. One of the activities was working at the police heliport. And one day one of the officers asked me if I wanted to go up in the helicopter. I wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> I said, sure. He told me the only stipulation was not to tell your dad. <laughs> so we went up and we flew around the city for about 20 minutes. When we landed, who do you think was standing right there waiting for me? <laughs> All he said was, did you have fun? I said, yep. Yeah. He said, okay, let's go home. He was a grandfather to many more kids than just his granddaughter, Leah. He became affectionately known as Pepe. This is a French-Canadian nickname for grandfather. Many of my cousin's children called him Pepe. He was fortunate to live long enough that when Leah began to have children of her own, he became a grand grandfather four times over. He was proud of his many grandchildren and grandchildren, most of whom were incidentally girls, not all though. After my mother passed, he lived alone, but a fall required him to live with me in Stockton, and we became a multi-generational household. There is much to be said to be living with the benefit of a grandparent in the home on a daily basis. He and I also became much closer then. For the last five years of his life, 
he chose to move to an assisted living facility, the Oaks Dinglewood. He was supposed to go there on a temporary basis, but he enjoyed it so much that he decided to make his, the move permanent. He loved music and singing along, and his favorite was the Marine Corps hymn. He also loved playing bingo, and I hear that he won quite often, often to the dismay of the other residents. He became more comfortable there. He would attend outings and activities as they were provided. Management and staff became like a second family to him. Thank you, Tony, for taking him under your wing and making sure he was okay. His family grew again when Marvin became the club commander of the Stockton Marine Corps. Many members were above and beyond for him. He always invited her to these and provided transportation to events and outings. They made sure he was dressed in his uniform when needed and always honored him with respect and dignity. So thank you to all of you. The brotherhood bond you gave him in the last years of his life meant so much to him and to us. And this service would not have been possible for not all of your hard work and dedication. So thank you. And to Frank. The last years of his life, he developed a special friendship with a fellow Iwo Jima survivor who always will be known as the kid. We're going to miss his smile and his easygoing attitude. I hope that some of us have learned from him how to be humble and not get caught up in our own importance, how to give to others without asking for anything in return and respectful. The question he was asked by almost all who met him in his later years was, what's the secret to living so long? His response seemed to sum up his view on life as simple as it was. Just keep breathing. Thank you. When I was little, my grandfather used to sing a lullaby to me. My grandparents lived a six hour drive away and I only saw him times a year. But my mother recorded him singing to me on videotape and I would watch it at home over and over. The words are from a very old poem called Winkin, Blinkin and Nod by Eugene Field. He sang it to me as his mother had sung it to him and he had sung to my mother when she was a child. So when I found out I was pregnant with my first child, I dug out that old tape and began singing it every night, even before she was born. And I've been singing it to all of my children ever since. The other two are asleep. <laughs> Winkin' and blinkin', <clears throat> winkin' and blinkin', and not one night sailed off in a wooden shoe, sailed on a river of crystal light into a sea of dew. Do you wish the old moon asked the three? Wearing fish that live in that beautiful sea, nets of silver old have we, said Lincoln, Lincoln, and Lord. No winking and blinking, not two little eyes, and not is a little head. And the ship that 
ship sailed that misty sea in we once trunked a bed So close your eyes while mother sings of beautiful sights that And you shall see those wonderful sights while sailing that beautiful sea such sights as were seen by the fishermen three Winkin, blinkin, and nod. The old moon laughed and sang. They rocked in the wooden shoe. And the wind that sped them all night long ruffled the waves of dew. The little stars were the herring fish. That lived in the sea. So cast your nets wherever you wish, but never feared are we. So sung the stars to the fishermen three, winking, blinking, and nod. So all night long their nets they threw. The twinkling foam. Then down from the skies came the wooden shoe, bringing the fishermen home. Twas all so pretty, a sail it seemed as if it could not be. That some folks thought twas a dream they dreamed of sailing. Beautiful sea, but I shall name you Fisherman. Winking, blinking, and Ladies and gentlemen. The following is a tribute video celebrating Major White's life and legacy. Major William Bill White entered the world as Billy Cedarberg on July 31, 1915 in Long Beach, California. He was the older of two boys born to Swan and Mary Cedarberg. He grew up in Long Beach with days spent on the beaches as well as his grandparents' farm in Reedley in the Central Valley. Young Billy was quite a handful as a child, resulting in him being sent to a Christian Science Military High School where he thrived. After his mother's second marriage to Leonard White, Bill changed his name to William C. White. Both Bill and his brother Bob joined the Marines. Bill was rejected the first time he applied, so he went to work on the Hoover Dam. Bob became a flight instructor and was later killed in a training accident. After his second and a successful marine application, Bill was sent to boot camp in San Diego in 1934, followed by sea school in 1935. He was stationed in Pearl Harbor in 1936 through 37. His next post in 1937 was in Shanghai, China, 4th Marine Regiment followed by recruiting duty in Los Angeles. When World War II started in 1942, he was assigned to parachute school and transferred to the 4th Parachute Battalion. The paratroopers were recalled from the Pacific in 1943 and formed the basis of the 28th Marine Regiment, part of the 5th Marine Division.
Fidel went to Parker Ranch in Hawaii for training and prepping for the invasion of Iwo Jima after many days at sea. His ship arrived at Iwo Jima on February 19, 1945. But he was not part of the initial assault. He joined the battle after the first flag was raised, landing on the beach directly under Mount Suribachi. As they were crossing to join the rest of the battalion, the second flag was raised. White was seriously wounded and returned to the United States to recover. After recovery, he was assigned to Camp Pendleton where he facilitated with the discharge of 400,000 Marines after the war ended. He married Myra Macklin in 1947. Bill's post-war years were spent in Hawaii in 1950 at the Marine Headquarters in Washington, D.C. He was commissioned a second lieutenant in 1952. Bill's life as a family man expanded with the birth of his daughters, Mary in 1956 and Alice in 1958. His military travels continued, Korea, San Francisco, and promoted to captain. Southern California at the El Toro Marine Air Station. Okinawa, where he served briefly before returning home to be with his dying wife, Myra. He married his third wife, Jeanette, a marriage that lasted 40 years. He was promoted to major in 1963 and retired from the Marine Corps in June 1964. Bill joined the Huntington Beach Police Department as a reserve officer in the late 1960s, joining the full-time force a few years later. For 30 years, Bill volunteered to lead a local Boy Scouts of America Explorer Post sponsored by the police department. His years as a family man saw travels around the country, several trips to Iwo Jima reunions, and lots of time fishing and enjoying his children, Mary of Stockton and Alice of Sacramento. He outlived three wives, the last two dying of cancer. Major White lived his last years in a senior facility, continuing being active, finding him either competing with other residents in bingo and table games or joining in sing-alongs. He was also an active member of the Stockton Marine Corps Club, participating in activities from Veterans Day events to serving as Grand Marshal of the Stockton Fourth of July Parade. In 2020, Major White gained international fame when a fellow resident at his retirement home posted requests on the internet for Valentine's cards for the then 104-year-old Marine. The story went viral as Operation Valentine, resulting in 400,000 cards and gifts pouring in. White appeared in all the local and regional news outlets as well as national and global news. The cards joined a lifetime of memories in Bill's scrapbooks stating that they would be part of his personal history. Family was central to Bill's life. In addition to his daughters, Mary and Alice, he has one granddaughter, 
Leah, and four great-granddaughters, Abigail, Nicole, Eloise, and Aurora. Two things have always remained constant in Bill's life, his love of country and the Marines, and his family. Major White's personal awards include the following. He was one of the last of a generation of men who were larger than life, fighting battles that will be remembered for all time. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the last roll call. First Sergeant Muffet. There, go to Sergeant. Sergeant, crowd check. Here, go to Sergeant. The following is a presentation of flags. The flag folding ceremony represents the same religious principles on which our country was originally founded. The portion of the flag done in honor is a can of blue containing the stars representing the states our veterans serve in uniform. The can fill the blue dresses from left to right and is inverted when draped as a pull on a casket of a veteran who has served our country in uniform. In the Armed Forces of the United States, at the ceremony of retreat the flag, is lowered, folded in a triangle fold and kept under watch throughout the night as a tribute to our nation's honored dead. The next morning, it is brought out at the ceremony of Reveille run afloat as a symbol of our belief and the resurrection of the body. The first fold of our flag is a symbol of life. The second fold is a symbol of our belief in the eternal life. The third fold is made in honor and remembrance of the veteran departing our ranks who gave a portion of life for the defense of our country to attain a peace throughout the world. The fourth fold represents our weaker nature 
For as American citizens trusting in God, it is to him we turn in times of peace as well as in time of war for his divine guidance. The fifth fold is a tribute to our country, for in the words of Stephen, Stephen Decatur, our country in dealing with other countries, may she always be right, but it's still our country, right or wrong. The sixth fold is for where our hearts lie. It is with our heart that we pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. The sevenfold is in tribute to our armed forces, for it is through the armed forces that we protect our country and our flag against all her enemies, whether they be founded within or without the boundaries of a republic. It flies on Mother's Day. The ninth fold is in tribute to womanhood, for it's been through their faith, love, loyalty, and devotion that the character of the men and women who have made this country great have been molded. The tenth fold is in tribute to the Father, for he too has given his sons and daughters for the defense of our country since they were first born. The eleventh fold in the eyes of Hebrew citizens represents a lower portion of the seal of King David and King Solomon and glorifies in their eyes the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The twelfth fold in the eyes of a Christian citizen represents an emblem of eternity and glorifies in their eyes God the Father, the Son, and Holy Ghost. Certificate of Congressional Recognition presented to the family of Major Bill White. On behalf of the United States House of Representatives, I would like to recognize Major Bill White for his honorable service with the United States Marine Corps. This certificate is to certify that this flag flown over the United States Capitol is in memorial of Major Bill White at the request of the Honorable Josh Harder. Member of Congress, Major White is deeply missed by the community and will leave a legacy on the Central Valley. Please accept my condolences on your loss. 
signed on this date by the Honorable Josh Harder and presented by Miss Helen Condit. Members, resolution by the Honorable Susan Talamantes Eggman, PhD, 5th Senatorial District, relative to memorializing. Major William White, United States Marine Corps, retired. Whereas the passing on March 4th, 2022, of retired Major William White of the United States Marine Corps, age 106, a highly decorated military veteran and former police officer who earned distinction for heroically fighting in the Battle of Iwo Jima, for which he received the Purple Heart, as well as being one of the longest living World War II veterans, has brought immense sorrow and loss to the people throughout the state of California. And whereas born on July 31st, 1915, in Long Beach, California. And whereas a resident of Stockton for the past 20 years, Major Bill White was preceded in death by his wife of 40 years, Jeanette. And he leaves to mourn in passing and celebrate his legacy, his daughters Mary Hudson, Alice White, his granddaughter Leah Schroeder, and his great granddaughters, Abigail, Nicole, Eloise, and Aurora, as well as numerous nieces, nephews, and other extended family members. Now, therefore, be resolved that the exemplary life and illustrious record of professional and civic accomplishments of retired Major William White of the United States Marine Corps, whose lifelong service to his country and community attest to his honor status as a member of the greatest generation be memorialized and puberty and that was bereaved family and friends in extended heartfelt sympathy. Dated this 28th day of May 2022, signed by the Honorable Susan Talamantes Eggman, PhD, 5th Senatorial District. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the benediction by Navy Captain Chuck Roots and remain standing for the rendition of Going Home by Bagpiper, Dr. Rafael Paso, followed by Hallelujah, the Marines Hymn, and Taps. Heavenly Father, we have recognized a man, flesh and blood, like others, yet a man who stepped up and made a significant difference in our world. Many will never have known him. Many will never have known that he lived. But we who are here, we know. And we know that because of him and those like him, we continue to be the home of the free, the land of the brave. Lord, this country that you give us has a value that cannot be understood. For these freedoms and 
this liberty that you have given to us is an immense gift. So we do well to remember those who have stood in its defense and who have lived a life that can only be emulated in our own efforts. But Lord, may we do so in a way that brings honor and glory to you, just as our friend, Major Bill White, demonstrated for us. So Father, as we go from this place, we do so a bit more humbled, quite a bit more reflective, but with the hope that with you guiding us, we might indeed be the men and women that you have called us to be. So that we could say with all boldness, God, bless America. We give you thanks as we go. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 It was my honor to meet Bill White at the Oaks at Inglewood. We, my husband and I brought music there, and music unites us. It's my honor to have been asked to sing the song Hallelujah, the Sailor's Memorial Day version. It's beautiful. Listen to the words. You packed your bags and shut the door You crossed the sea to fight a war You didn't know just what would happen to you Stepped in the dirt, boots on the ground The gunfire was the only sound And to yourself you whispered hallelujah Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Every day and every night, you walk the walk, you fight the fight. You never saw the end in sight, now did you? 
The days are washing a haze of red, the blood, the mud, too many dead. Your weary soul was crying, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Too late to help. You hear a shot, you know you're in a deadly spot. You never thought this day would come, now did ya? Your brother falls down to the ground, the enemy is all around, and from your You fought the fight till it was done. You have the strength to carry on. You thought it'd be much better back home, did ya? But you try each day, keep pushing through. But the battle lives inside of you. It's a cold and it's a broken Some six years ago, Lori and I were part of starting her business called A Voice to Comfort. And we began traveling to a lot of senior, senior communities. And we would offer to them the wonderful music of Broadway. One of our very beginning uh, communities that we began visiting is Oaks in Inglewood. And we were introduced to Bill. As it's already been said, he invited us to his room one day to share with us some of his memories. And we are distance runners, and we must admit, we had a difficult time keeping up with him. But we shared those moments, and it was one of those times as a veteran I was able to offer some of my history. And he offered me his history as well. And at that moment, we shared a brotherhood. And I said, I have such respect and regard for your service and what you've contributed to our country and our patriotism. And he looked me straight in the eye and he says, I have love and respect for yours. I will never forget. My wife, has come to know the dedication and the honor of serving our great country. She has been a support and a strength for me. And so, in honor of Bill and family and all of you here for including us today, on the back of your program are the words, Please, I will lead you in the Marines' hymn. 
From the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we fight our country's battles in the air on land and sea. First to fight for right and freedom and to keep our honor clean. We claim the title of United States Marines. Our flags unfurl to every breeze from dawn to setting sun. We have fought in every clime and place where we could take a gun. In the snow of far off northern lands and in sunny tropic scenes, you will find us always on the job. Is to health to you and to our core, which we are proud to serve. In many a strife we fought for life and never lost our nerve. If the army and the navy ever looks on heaven's scenes, they will find the streets are guarded by the United States Marines. Yeah, we got.